Today is Monday, March the 16th, 2020, and we've been discussing for two weeks now steps to living the resurrection lifestyle. And we've talked about this at length in order for us to be filled with the power of the Spirit to demonstrate to the world in which we live that there is resurrection power in the saints of Jesus Christ. And last week, we talked about how this is demonstrated in community. Acts 2.40 2 through 46 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as every anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. When the followers of Jesus Christ, the ecclesia, the called out ones, take community seriously, notice the result. Fear comes upon every soul. Wonderful awe is this kind of fear. Wonders and signs were accomplished by the apostles. Favor is given to God's people in verse 47. People are added to the church. Praise is continually given to God. And we have often overlooked the value of praise in the community of believers. What we have just witnessed and what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks is how the early church lived in community with one another. Without being too dogmatic, I would conclude that every church must have these ingredients to live in community. Now, the doctrines of the apostles and Christ must be held to in an unfaltering fashion. We must share and care for one another. We must not allow materialism, but rather the koinonia of the unity in Christ to lead us. Everything we do must be saturated in prayer. The result is a like-minded faith, which will produce an increased sense of resurrection power, which in turn will result in a lifestyle pleasing to God. A church unified in sacrifice to accomplish its mission and individuals will be compassionate about their God. Now, how is this going to flesh out? Well, obviously, we have to spend time together. And I'll be quite frank with you when I say that this is not a large church gathering. That's not community. No matter what anybody says to you, that's community, not community. You may, you may have a sense that it is a part of how you belong in your life. But you can't really, in an hour, an hour and a half, or even two hours, have community with uh, 200 people at the same time. Now, there may be a sense of community about you, but you're not doing the things. You may be doing one or two of them, but you're not doing the things that really lead to maturing together in Christ. We must be involved in each other's lives. And I know a lot of people want to avoid that today. I and mean, I'm not putting down the church. And I think there ought to be these large gatherings. But I'll tell you where it works. It works in a small gathering, small group gathering, a cell group, a small group. That's where really we learn to live together in community, where we rub shoulders with one another. We become accountable to adhering to the apostles' doctrine, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, where we break bread together, where we fellowship together, where we share the one another's together and so forth. I want to challenge you today to be filled with praise as God leads us deeper into his love. See, what I've, what I've seen is that worship in my lifetime has fallen on hard times. I, I didn't say we didn't worship. I think a, a lot of worship today is just worshiping our worship. We get all excited about a song that gave us goosebumps when we listen to it on the radio. But worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. And churches still meet, but very often their focus isn't worship. It's entertainment. We want to entertain you because you're used to being entertained and we don't want you to leave here and not give your tithes. Make no mistake. Worship should never be boring. It should be exuberant and filled with the ism of the Holy Spirit. But it 
should never resort to cheap thrills to manufacture something later called a worship experience. Rather, the truth of who God is and what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, should penetrate our minds through God's word and the lyrics of the songs that we sing so that we are moved with joy in our affections and our emotions. In this way, our worship exalts Christ by its truth and ex expressed in humble joy. And so the worship that of a gathering of believers probably needs to include the testimony of what God's done since we last met together, the, the prayers of what we need to have done by God in our lives, confession of our sin, therefore. See, uh, all this stuff fits together. All this is about community. I'm kind of summarizing what we've been talking about this last week. Uh, I read this story once. A collector of rare books uh, ran into a friend one day who had just thrown an old Bible away. It had been in his family for generations. And it just happened to mention to this rare book collector that someone named Guten something had, had printed it. And the collector of rare books looked at the guy and said, not Gutenberg, gasped the book collector. Yes, I believe, I believe that was his name, said the man. Well, you idiot. He just threw away one of the first books ever printed. A copy like that has recently sold at auction for over $400,000. And, uh, and so his friend looked at him and said, well, mine wouldn't have been worth much at all because some clown by the name of Martin Luther had scribbled all over it. Now, why did I share that? He didn't know the value of, the, of that Bible. It was just old. The pages were getting worn and so forth. We've lost the value of community. In fact, we some of you may never have experienced the community in the church. So here's what happens. When community is genuine, following the apostles' doctrine, God's allowed to work in an uninhibited manner in, in our midst. Materialism is not allowed to lead us, but rather koinonia. Intimate fellowship is maintained. And everything's done and decided upon by prayer. So let's pray. Lord, you've been awesome to us. You gave us instructions on how we're to live, what we're to do in community and the, in the fellowship of other saints. I'm, I'm encouraging and believing and praying that those who watch this video are going to be challenged to be involved in a small group of some type where they actually get down to brass tacks and share their lives and grow together and mature in Christ. Oh, Lord, help the church today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace. Have a blessed day.